Newgrounds had its roots in being an independently ran website, and therefore also served as the soil that helped grow those roots in user-generated content made by humble folks or groups looking to expand their creativity or make their dreams come true. And it's no surprise to see how much they've grown over the past two decades because of that. Many of the creators I used to watch, and even some of my friends who are artists, utilize Newgrounds in part of their existence. And that's pretty good to hear. All of the internet's favorite free games, animators, and artists were at your fingertips with Newgrounds. I'm not deep with Newgrounds lore, but since I grew up with Adobe Flash and Unity 3D web player games, I always found myself trying to play whatever racing game that was available on the platform at the time. I mean, Super Drift 3D had its roots in Newgrounds, and that game was a blast to play when I was a kid. And when it comes to indie animation, Newgrounds would be believed to hold the prominence in starting the new era for it, and many Newgrounds legends such as Senior Pello, Joel G, David Firth, and Zach Hadel would go on to craft masterpieces that would change the way we see animation forever, except one of them happened to get their own show on Adult Swim. And Smiling Friends isn't indie animation because of that. But the spirit and direction of Smiling Friends made me think that Smiling Friends was indie animation, which technically isn't. And the show is on that curve of simple animation and frequent content creator cameos that made it seem like it was an internet cartoon all along. They got THE nostalgia critic in the show at one point. And I modeled almost my entire YouTube career after him. Smiling Friends had the spirit of a dumb internet cartoon 8th graders would watch during the school computer lab. And that's how I got my first community note, if it was still there in the first place. But even as if Smiling Friends wasn't really part of the indie animation bubble, is there any other show that has a similar charm to it? Well, the closest I could think of is this one. It's not about a company with a group of employees who try to make people smile every day. It's none of that, really. It isn't even about making friends at all. But here are some clues I could gather about this show that I could give you right now. A. It has a mild VHS filter. B. It's animated in the aesthetic of old retro anime. C. It's a cartoon about fighting and tournaments. And D. It's funny as hell. With these clues put together, you get a relative newcomer to the Newgrounds scene and a future staple in indie animation. Punch Punch Forever. So get this, this canonical 90s fighting gag anime with actual Japanese voice acting and an actual OP sung in the same language wasn't made by some Japanese person. You could thank an Irishman for all of that. Speedo has made some quite notable animations during his time on YouTube and Newgrounds. Actually, he was a madman. He animated an entire music video for a J-Metal band. But give a madman a canvas and some art tools, and you get something that is just like Punch Punch Forever. This is not only one of the most popular projects on my review lineup, but also the funniest I'll ever get to review myself. The humor is just as extraordinary as the animation itself, which takes in a mix of vibes from both anime and western animation. Powered by the ever-loving spirit of the man in the big tank, Punch Punch Forever is not only the work of one man, but also the support of many other artists and creators who lend a helping hand in making it. 
Punch Punch Forever's fast and energetic environment, while maintaining a humorous background, is a powerful first to be reckoned with. With that being said, let's break the first two episodes down to see why it's so special to me. The premise of Punch Punch Forever is average. You have this kid who's training to become the champion of combat against demons on an island inhabited by demons and monsters of all sorts in something called the Infinite Tournament. Supported by her mom and half-sister No-No, who's a demon herself, Gogo Matsumoto takes on the challenge to become the strongest fighter on Death Island and dominate the tournament so she could one day face the King of Demons who suspected to be her father. Oh wait, they already spoiled that in the second episode, and Gogo's real dad was just killed instantly. Ah, talk about breaking the suspension of disbelief. Ah, talk about the story is the base of every other fighting and tournament anime, except what makes it so special is that it doesn't take itself seriously, which I mean being funny instead. The backbone of the plot is heavily supported by the strong foundation of comedy. This anime is gold darn hilarious if you ignore all the fan service of the boobies and the sexy demon chicks, and focus on the crazy antics of Gogo through her progression. The humor is a giant fusion of Eastern and Western portions of animation, which is unusual, but would make sense considering this is supposed to be a parody of the common anime made by some Irish dude. You could see many kinds of influences the animation is drugged with, such as a pinch of magic from Cartoon Network shows like Flapjack or Chowder while also preserving the charm of gag anime like Pop Team Epic and Boba Bo 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 Bo. It's almost as funny as Smiling Friends if you think about it on a deeper level. They even reference the wacky internet shit like the huge ass straw Chris Chan is known for when she drew herself drinking it. Yes! There is a fair share of action and grit since it's about fighting and tournaments and all, but the humor is what fuels the story, characters, and animation of it all. Going further, the animation is something that should be gandered at especially, because it holds the classic anime feel to it while possessing that Newgrounds charm. The animation can take less than 15 frames to project a juicy and toony aesthetic, and it's also connected to how this show balances western and eastern elements. It's like if Panty and Stocking had a baby with smiling friends, and it can shift to a dramatic level of style and case. From the over-exaggerated facial expressions shot close-up, to the sudden sonic speed of the animation's pacing, like what Smiling Friends would have, even the minimal blood and girl of the show can switch between seriousness and the seriousness. It's one of those, um... Special cases where violence is funny. Hee hee ha ha hoo hoo. But I mean, you gotta keep yourself on the front page, right? This is supposed to be replicating an anime of some sorts, yet sometimes the most American influences can cross over the animation. It's absolutely incredible. They even show the old school storyboard of Emperor Koro's childhood in the second episode, which is worth a hee hee ha ha hawk to a Flames of Disaster, Wacky World of Tex Avery Steen. And this isn't just Speedo's work. Oh no, this show actually has cameos of talents from other notable artists and animators. They usually have the shortest screen time in both the pilot and episode 2, but it's a surprise to point out the iconic art styles and animation crafted by some notable creators online on Punch Punch Forever, especially if you know them. For instance, Violet's block bench model of an anime girl can be seen on Nono's computer screen in the pilot, both in the beginning and end of it. And despite the 3D modeling that stands out, Violet's 
power shouldn't be underestimated because she literally works on the Minecraft Championship! A tournament where all of the most popular Minecraft YouTubers, mostly twinks, fight in mini games or some shit! I even got early access to MCC Island when it first came out! Plus, the iconic art of Crispy Boat can be found in the pilot as well. He's known for his claymation textures and work with Katakuris. His PFP was even made by him too. And that's not all. The second episode's eyecatcher even brought Picasso Trigger onto the team a Japanese animator known for their work on the seizure-inducing Yababaina music video featuring Hatsune Miku and, uh, Pink Lady and, um, Green Girl. Yeah. I don't know my vocaloids well. The animation is goofy, appeasing, and might carry a few surprises along the way if the show knows how to play its cards right. Even the OP makes you laugh. Speaking of cameos, we also get another one, but this time in real life by the Emperor of Japan. Well, not quite. Played by none other than the fakest neckbeard and one of the best trolls around, Sephiroth Sword 57, who does a pretty good job acting like he knows more Japanese culture than the average resident of Japan. As the Emperor of Japan, we don't get to see much of his character in the show other than the pilot. But he could be one of the many interesting and impressive minor characters that we could see in the show. And while we're here, let's move on to the next topic of the characters in Punch Punch Forever. The characters are peculiar too. The designs can range specifically from harmless looking ones like Gogo to ones that look way meaner like Emperor Koro, who can even look less serious himself. Comparing the two, Gogo is this sweet, simple, adorable young girl who spurts big glasses where her pupils are supposed to be, carrying out that humble yet confident stride in victory and participation. While Emperor Koro is supposed to be this big scary king who looks like a Devil May Cry final boss on Galaxy Gas, who can also have his funny moments too, they're both far off from each other, but still contain the same level of humor aside from their looks. It's also worth mentioning that Speedaroo has quite a knack for drawing boobies and ass, so of course, there has to be some sex appeal to the characters such as the mom, Jin, and especially No-No. A lot of people find a demon's heart for some reason, no thanks to Bibzy Pop. And definitely a lot of people, including me, do find No-No hot. I like her character design as well, but let's skip to the gooning overload for now and talk more about the characters. They're just as bouncy and energetic as Gogo and Koro. They're so elastic and goofy enough that they gave off a SpongeBob impression, more rather than looking like they're in an anime, with Gogo being the most indestructible out of all of them. Even the frog is worth a chuckle too, starting from the intro who is based off Speedo's own frog, Sona. But what could ever bring out the true anime aesthetic in Punch Punch Forever other than a VHS filter and a Japanese voice acting? The voice acting is what makes Punch Punch Forever stand out from the rest because all of it is done in Japanese just like what a real anime would have. What? Sayonara. Yeah. It's a rare and bold case for an indie animation to do so, because almost every piece of dialogue in this show is not English. Even the fucking intro was done in Japanese. It's weird because it projects all of these goofy western elements, yet still keeps the essential spirit of a Japanese anime in its position. Speedo even shows live action clips from Japanese shows and commercials to give it that authentic feel. And the voice acting is great, and Sephiroth's Japanese is great. 
and the VHS filter and resolution is pretty fair as if they're not overdoing it. It's brilliant. It's barbaric. I blame video games. They're teaching our kids to solve hunger by slaughtering the weak. <laughs> Shut up, you tiny little freak! I bet you've never even gotten laid. Oh, I have. I have. Lots of times. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly by underage chicks. Punch Punch Forever is a great example of perfect chemistry. It's a special tribute to the old school fighting animes that's way funnier than it should be. Fan service aside, I could be talking about every way this show makes me laugh for days. The animation is an experimental but successful mix of Western and Eastern animation standards, with additional contributions from other artists and creators that make it seem like the Newgrounds community put so much love in it. The characters are funny, and the show tries unique ways to emit the anime-like atmosphere with stuff nobody has ever tried yet. Like dubbing everything in Japanese, this show screams Newgrounds and Sugoi as much as any other Newgrounds in the animation project or other things that are inspired by anime and is one of the best examples of indie animation you could still see on YouTube if YouTube doesn't try to hide it from us. Since the pilot and episode 2 are available on Speedo's channel, it's highly recommended that you go buy their Punch Punch Forever merch if you want to support the show. I definitely want an episode 3 on the way, so I would definitely purchase some IF IT WASN'T ALL FUCKING SOLD OUT! But I think it just shows that Punch Punch Forever is set for a great future and many fans willing to push it ahead, just like what it rightfully deserves. With that being said, I've been Bohemius, and I've got places to go and assignments to submit. Sayonara! tweet on Twitter so I could close it on 700 followers. Ah! Making banger tweets is so hard. People who do this for a living deserve more showers and exercise.